Mother Teresa said the greatest dis-ease in the West is loneliness. Disease or dis-ease. It's the loneliness of people in our suburban settings. So we engineered the opportunity for casual social connection. One of the challenges that the developer faces in trying to develop a place like Palumbar that is really an attractive place for people to live and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create a great habitat for urban homo sapiens. It's not just roads and services and dealing with your stormwater. It's actually primary focus should be to create livable spaces for people where it is an enjoyment to live. And that casual social engagement just comes naturally. We had to work very hard here with the local council to finally get them to adopt road widths that were the minimum possible. Now the reason for this was that we needed to ensure that by design traffic speed was controlled. Not by sign but by design. The roads have been designed here in principle so that cars will naturally travel 40k. If they travel faster than that, the drivers feel a little discomfort. In that circumstance, living environment, the amenity for residents, is much more attractive. The higher the traffic speed in the street, the less people will use their front yards. In a traditional township, one of the key principles is having a grid street pattern. And that way, there's quite a range of choices about walking around. There's no dead ends, no cul-de-sacs. A plain grid can be enhanced by having a crank in the street so that the person walking can't see the hundreds of metres ahead. They might see 50 or 100 metres ahead. It's a slight crank. And when they get around the corner, they get an, a different vista. And these are both calms traffic, but it improves the pedestrian experience. At the point where pedestrians cross, you cut out the parking lanes, so the pedestrian only has to walk across two travelling lanes. Instead of having cross intersections, we had offset T intersections. And that causes drivers to be doubly cautious. And in that circumstance, we find that the accident history of intersections that have that configuration have extremely low accident history. So the aim is not to build a suburb where cars can drive quickly through and disregard the life and the life experiences of the future residents but rather it's turning that on its ear and making drivers are allowed to come in here provided they behave themselves and you enforce their behaviour by design. We realised that we had to demonstrate what the houses would look like and what we were intending with the development control plan. So we engaged six architects who did hand sketches of the first 30 houses in the street we provided overview and guidance to that and they had two days to do six plans each. There were five architects. We came back with those, we put them on the wall to see what it looked like and then we went to a builder's draftee that we knew. He then drafted the design according to those sketches that were done. That way we had the economy that the marketplace is actually looking for but we had a higher quality design. Windows and doors provide the character for dwellings. It's the most important single thing. So all of our windows have a higher vertical proportions greater than their horizontal proportions. Long lineal windows is a modern phenomenon. So this has a more traditional feel. And when you walk around Columbar, you'll see what an impact that has on the character of the place. In new urbanism or these new traditional townships, you have to turn up the dial on design. It's quite complex and it's one of the reasons why many developers don't take it on is because of the range of decisions and the cultural shift that's needed for consultants. In this case, we negotiated with service authorities to move the footpath as hard as possible 
against the private property boundary. We allowed the houses to come forward to the street within a metre. The ceiling heights in each house were mandated 2.7 and that allows a skylight to be put above the front door and we typically had side lights beside the front door as well and this allows light to flood into the house without a loss of privacy. We designed a number of houses that had front office coming straight off the veranda so that the people using the office coming to visit the person in the office didn't have to go into the private part of the home. We had rear lanes so there's no garaging and dominating the streetscape and the services are all underground naturally. We found that rear lanes, contrary to popular developer belief, are not more expensive because the rewards are far more significant. You can narrow the allotments, have smaller allotments and far more efficient. So your overall yield is higher and where you have the front setbacks down to one metre, you're not wasting that land and you do away with those long front driveways which offsets the cost of construction of the rear lane. So overall it's actually a much more attractive proposition to put in rear lanes from our perspective. We required front porches or front verandas on every dwelling whenever we sold a block. We had to sign off, but we left flexibility for each landowner to design the front veranda in the way that they chose. This one here I think is a lovely example of where the, the homeowner put some effort into getting a very attractive front veranda. And we see a few examples around like this. It just adds to the diversity. There was a beautiful small booklet written by a guy called Thomas Sharp. He was the head of Oxford Brooks and Design College in about 1940, and it was called Anatomy of a Village. And the key element I took from that book is that the essence of a village lies in its uncertainty. That when someone's walking around the village, they don't really know what they're going to find around the corner. And that just adds to the interest from a pedestrian's perspective. The side fences were 1.4 and uh, the fencing at the front was 1.2. We had traditional picket fencing as a requirement or similar and uh, we banned metal fencing. We provided playground equipment and further an opportunity for a local community garden. We planted about a quarter of a million plants here we actually won an Environmental Management Award for stormwater management on this project. This particular group of houses with a rear lane uh, have nine metre frontages. Now in most circumstances nine metres would be unacceptable if you have a double garage, well that would take six metres of that frontage. So this particular product was extremely popular with the early retirees. They have level access through the rear lane. The front verandas are well elevated above the street and these have been particularly popular. So as we get closer to the town centre, where the future commercial services will be, the density should be pick up. And this street shows a full street of two-storey buildings, quite tight frontages, only about seven metres frontage. And uh, this is a key element of, again, getting more diversity in the town centre. And people who live here will just walk across the street or walk, walk one, one block to a traditional main street. Profile here were primarily singles in their mid-years. That was the purchaser's profile. And this particular group don't want lawns, they don't want mowers. It's no different to living in an apartment, in a way but it's just a little more attractive and it's a rather interesting setting and you find that people can actually talk across the laneway to one another because it's only six metres across to someone on the balcony on the other side. The existing regulatory framework is primary challenge to bringing in more sustainable urbanism. We were just so lucky to have a zone here where the one zone covers all uses in the town centre, medium density, commercial, residential, covers all aspects of the uses that you would find in a traditional town centre under the one zone. And it's generally guided by the Tullambar Village DCP, which set the guidelines of how things should work. Now that's quite a different way of approaching it, 
but it's an indicator of what needs to be done if we're going to get the existing regulatory framework reformed. My view is that actually that it's too hard to reform it. We need to just produce a new set of regulations that will enable this type of development as an alternative to the sprawl model which is currently being rolled out everywhere.